We are well into 2024, so we're long overdue a Top Factory Games video, and I'm sure you're all dying to play something a little bit different whilst you're waiting for Satisfactory 1.0 to be released, which will be coming later this year. So let's have a look at what's in store for us, covering new games and games that are going to be updated in 2024. And if you do like this breakdown, do hit the thumbs up, and perhaps we'll do another one in the lead up to 2024. Now first on today's list is the recently released Foundry. It's what happens when Factorio meets Minecraft and has so much potential for the factory gaming niche and well worth keeping an eye on even if you don't check it out right away, as we can expect regular updates in its lead up to 1.0. Now one thing that I love about this game is the mixture of playstyles. Initially you're balancing the consumption of ore nodes as they slowly deplete, but in the late game you'll unlock fracking, which will allow you to turn depleted ores into infinite resource wells, completely upturning the systems that you develop early in the game. It's definitely one to keep an eye out for. Moving on from Foundry, we should probably talk about its inspiration, Factorio. Factorio is receiving a hefty Space Age DLC, which is expected to come in August this year. Continuing the player's journey after launching rockets into space, you'll find new worlds and unique challenges to overcome. Now, I've never been a huge fan of Factorio myself, but this is certainly appealing to me and one we may be covering on the channel. Now, if you're someone who enjoys the top-down factory building in Factorio, then Potion Pipeline may be the game for you, where you'll be building huge factories to harvest magical resources and then turn these said resources into magical potions. This takes a unique approach to the factory building genre, bringing magic into the mix. Unfortunately, we don't have a release window for it as of yet, but it's said to be coming soon. Recently, we've been seeing a new take on the factory automation genre, a genre that is typically top-down or first-person, but that has changed with Autoforge's release in March of this year. Now, Autoforge is a 2D platform sandbox, so think of Terraria or Oxygen Not Included, but rather than a colony sim, it's a factory game. An interesting take and one I'm excited to learn more about as the game continues to be updated in its early access period. Speaking of platformers, you may not have heard of our next one. Snacktorio, another 2D factory cooking simulator, is one where you have to satisfy the hunger of unspeakable horrors by automating factory lines. If you fail to sate their hunger, you might be the one that ends up on the plate. Now our next game is one that I'm excited to sink my teeth into again. Shapes 2, the sequel to Shapes, is coming with a planned release in August, and it improves on the masterfully crafted Shapes.io. Once again, you'll be cutting, painting, and merging shapes to feed to the void in an endless marathon in a procedurally generated world. Along with new graphics and machines, You'll also find the new 3D nature of Shapes 2 will force you to get creative using multiple levels to automate the perfect shape. It looks like August is shaping up to be a great month for automation games. Now if you're looking for a cozier factory game, then make sure to check out Odd Sparks. It's an automation game that has had very positive reviews since its release at the end of April. In Odd Sparks, you'll be tasked with exploring a strange fantasy world where you'll unlock technologies of the past and in doing so, automate sparks to run your workshops and produce an endless supply of resources. The art style of this game definitely has cute vibes and one that can be played co-op online should you wish. Now if you are enjoying this video please do hit the thumbs up and let me know which game you're most excited to see in the comments below. But moving swiftly on I'm very excited to share with you Lifecraft which takes a very unique twist on the factory automation genre. As a single cell organism it is our job 
to manage and organize its functions to create a fully fledged system and grow. It's a biological approach to factory gaming and one that I'm very excited to see. I came across this game by chance whilst researching this video and I'm surprised to have heard so little about it. So if you're interested in me doing a deep dive and checking out this game then do let me know in the comments below and if you want to support the devs I'll put a link in the description to its Steam page so you can check it out yourself. Next we have an automation favourite, Captain of Industry, and it's just received update 2 where you'll now have access to a new map, Armageddon, as well as a map editor, hydrogen vehicles and a whole lot more. If you already own the game but haven't played it in a while, this might be the perfect opportunity to jump back in and join the fun. We mentioned previously Dawn Apart, another game that I'm interested to hear more about, where you're in charge of growing a settlement and exploiting the resources on your planet. It's supposed to be coming soon, but I haven't heard any news about the game recently, so it may be a little bit further down the line than we hope. And another game that I'm waiting to hear more about but has been silent as of recently is Industrial Annihilation. This is the sequel to Planetary Annihilation, blending real-time strategy with deep factory building to create a blend of my two favourite genres. They had planned for a Q2 release this year but given it's already June, we may have to wait a little bit longer. With any luck, we'll have some substantial information about it within the next month or two. Tectonica has been out for almost a year, and unlike many early access games which seem to be slow at releasing updates, Tectonica has already moved on to its fifth update. The most recent update saw the game receiving new maps and advanced settings to allow you to play the game how you want, and their next update plans to bring in new mini games for you to play with your friends. The dedication to releasing these updates is great to see and I'm excited to see what they have planned over the next six months. Desynced released at the end of last year and brought in a whole new approach to factory automation, using basic logic and coding to allow you to program your drones to collect and transport resources for you. It's a vastly different approach to what we've seen prior and the game's receiving regular updates in its lead up to 1.0. So what better time to check out the game? We then have Revive and Prosper. This was also released at the end of last year and has somehow remained safely below my radar at least until now. The game receives regular updates in its early access form and considers itself a complex but not difficult voxel automation game featuring from the get-go belts, trains, teleports and more importantly catapults for transportation of resources. What interests me most though is the use of water physics throughout the game to run your factories and return fertility to the land. You'll see yourself engineering complex waterways to sustain your community, similar to Timberborn, but without beavers. What? Now, a few months ago, I was lucky enough to be invited to check out The Crust on Steam, and I had a great time playing through the demo mission. The mix of colony sim and factory automation really blends well together, and I'm looking forward to playing some more of it when it releases in the latter half of this year. And what would a top factory automation games of 2024 video be without one of the most prominent factory games in the automation niche at the moment, which is Dyson Sphere Program, where you take control of a mech to harvest the resources across multiple planets to build a Dyson Sphere. At the end of last year, they released the Dark Fog update, which brought with it enemy AI to take on, but with Dyson Sphere program being in early access, we'll surely receive more information about the game and its updates in the near future. Now if the fear of an AI enemy swarming your factories is far too scary for you, don't worry, I have another chilled automation game to check out. 
Time to Morp. This was released in March and features cute creatures called Morps that morph into new resource producing creatures based on the resources they consume. It's a real twist on the factory genre making use of creatures instead of mega factories. But if Time to Morp is too cartoony and vibrant for you, then make sure to ground yourself in the beautiful world of Satisfactory. And no factory video is worth its salt without checking in on this gem of a game. Satisfactory, for those of you who don't know, is a first person automation game where you are tasked with exploiting the handcrafted world and producing a huge mix of items to send off into space. It's one of the big players in the factory automation niche and deserves a place on any automation fan Steam library. And with Satisfactory releasing to 1.0 before the end of this year, then this could be the perfect opportunity to check it out if you haven't already. And you can bet I'm going to be covering it in depth on this channel from the get go. Mini Settlers was introduced to me a few weeks ago on stream. It's a minimalistic city builder where you'll be setting up efficient logistic networks to ensure you fulfill your growing city's needs. The game is earmarked for Q3, but you can check out the demo right now on Steam for free. Final Factory has also just been released to early access. It's a game that blends factory building and spaceship design in a rich infinite universe to explore. You're going to be able to build massive fleets to fight off the local aliens and discover new technologies that will help you unlock the secrets of an ancient civilization. This has been on my watch list for a while and I think I'm going to have to get it. I know we have some Hydroneer lovers amongst our community here, and it's fair to say it's worth checking out this year. Along with some minor free updates, April brought with it the new journey to Volcalidus. It's a DLC that features a new volcanic map, which brings with it new mechanics, resources, and vehicles to play around with. It's a large DLC, so if you loved the base game, make sure to check out the DLC whilst you've got a few hours free. You're going to be harvesting minerals, smelting ores, and making a whole lot of coin. And if that wasn't enough for you, we have Tower Factory coming in November 2024. Though there's already a demo available if you'd like to check it out, this is a factory automation approach to the addictive roguelike tower defense niche. Use your logistics knowledge to automate and optimize resource production using conveyors whilst defending against waves of monsters. Honestly, that's quite a lot of factory games that we've covered in this one, and I'm sure these 20 odd games aren't the only ones that we have for this year, but there's always one or two that crop up out of nowhere. It's astonishing how much the factory automation genre has really blown up in the last five years. So if you'd be interested in me covering the rise of factory games in a future video, do let me know in the comments below. But until next time, why not check out my video on why factory games like these are so addictive. But guys, thank you so much for watching and thanks goes as always to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, notably our solo coach Patreon, Fireless, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity, Ben and Star, and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is the Souchen Husky. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.